Hi, gang. Welcome to the last of our um, discussions about the new weird and the old weird and the weird class. Today, we'll be looking at the film Annihilation, which, again, if those of you who haven't been reading the notes and stuff like that, is available off a database called Swank. If you log into the library databases, go to a page called Swank, it should be there on the front page as one of the videos you can just simply click on and you will be able to watch the movie in full. Um, one of the things you've done for us is you have given us a link with the original shooting script. Um, there is quite a difference in many respects between that original conception, that original shooting script, and the movie as we have it. The final version, for instance, gives us a character and a scenario that's not in the original shooting script. The final version features Lomax. Lomax is the character in the hazmat suit who interrogates Lena. The interrogation of Lena by Lomax is a framing device, a, a, a framing technique. Puts us very much in mind of Arthur Macon's The White People, which gives us the, the Green Book Girl's Diary, okay, uh, which ends abruptly, and we call it the Green Book, but also a wraparound story where Ambrose, okay, is able to weigh in and give us a lot of insights. That kind of wraparound story, that kind of framing device, okay, is a narrative technique that, in a sense, makes a story weird, okay, because th that layer, th those layers, those layers of narration, okay, we associate with the Call of Cthulhu, okay, th th they they really give the story that issue of ignorance versus knowledge. We are literally moving out of ignorance into knowledge in the interrogation. In, in the original shooting script, we have that scene when the new Cain, okay, the doppelganger Cain, the alien Cain, suddenly appears, reappears in Lena's life as she's painting the bedroom. But he seems different. And they sit in the kitchen and the new cane sits at a table. Okay, and there's a glass of water. When he sips from it, there's a little bit of blood in it. But before that occurs, Lena interrogates the new cane. And she's very frustrated with his constant answer of, I don't know. In the final movie, she is the one who is vexing. Lomax keeps asking her questions at the beginning of our movie, and she keeps saying, I don't know. Just like the doppelganger Kane did, the new Kane did. And finally, Lomax just asks Lena, well, what do you know? Okay. And so, okay, knowledge. Okay. That's what makes a weird story where ignorance gives way to knowledge. And the whole movie unfolds as the story she tells Lomax in the interrogation. And the whole story is one of asking questions. Almost every dialogue scene is people asking questions of each other. Uh, from um, other interrogation scenes where Le Lena is talking to Dr. Ventress and trying to figure out what's going on. To when the team first meets each other and they're sitting around a table and they're asking questions about who each other are and things of that nature. Uh, or when Lena first comes to consciousness inside the inside the shimmer and doesn't know what's going on, they start asking questions about what's happening. Why have they lost these these this week of time and stuff like that? And again, so you, we have these these and sometimes they're just basic questioning, and sometimes they they are more interrogations. And we're reminded of another very very strong interrogation that happens later on with the character of Anya. Anya is is just trustworthy. Of the other members of the team and it's and, and toward the end of end, end of the film she inca incapacitates them and she be, she ties them up and she begins to question them she begins to interrogate them and the and just as with lomax uh anya's interrogation anya thornson's character played by gina rodriguez anya focuses the interrogation on lena okay lena is our character okay who has inside knowledge. And here, let me, I gotta get rid of something here. Okay, sorry about that. 
Uh, Lena does know what people want to find out because she has inside knowledge. She's, she is the inside narrator. And, uh, and Anya, okay, wants to know what's really going on because she suspects that Lena is not leading them out. Lena doesn't want to help everybody escape the shimmer, but to go deeper in and to go to the lighthouse. Okay, and that's true. That's what that's what Lena wants to do. Gina takes the locket of Lena and reveals that the locket has the face of the face of Cain. Everybody on the team not long ago saw a video in which Cain, okay, the leader of his special team, cuts open a fellow soldier's stomach. And out of that stomach comes these worm-like creatures. They're alive. Okay. Something is very strange. People are transforming. Okay. And in our interrogation, in Gina's interrogation, not Gina, but in Anya. Anya's interrogation of Lena, Anya produces a knife and wonders if she should cut open Lena. And at that moment... We hear the voice of Cass Shepard, who we all thought had passed away, that she had died, okay, killed by the bear. But we hear her calling for help. Okay, Anya drops the knife, grabs her gun, and runs outside. And then in comes the bear. And we okay. begin to see something that's been mentioned several times in several different ways in the story, this idea of mirroring, this idea of echoing, this idea of the 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 re a a recreation of what you are in the other. And we see that with the bear. Um, we see the bear has, it, it's to some sense, absorbed some part of the psyche of Cassie. It, it, it can speak with her voice. Josie at one point says, that would be a horrible way to die. Having all that remains is your fear. And it's interesting also because in some ways, the, the bear mirrors the team in many ways. Um, when does the bear first appear? The bear appears when they first billowacked, and there's starting to be tension among the team. Anya doesn't want to sleep at in in the in the uh, in the base in in the mess hall, uh, but Ventress overrides her. Anya, they have an argument whether they're going to go forward into the shimmer or whether they're going to try to escape, and um, Anya becomes quite upset, and Lena becomes upset, and Ventress they all become very quite upset with each other, and that's the point at which the bear emerges. It does the same thing with this interrogation scene. It's during moments of distrust, during moments of anger, of 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 madness, both both insanity and anger, where the bear emerges. In some ways, the bear is echoing their own emotional states. And we see that also when Lena is sitting there and the bear and she says, Don't move, don't, you know, don't react. And the bear also almost takes on, as as Peter's mentioned to me, almost a loving, caring type. M maybe see there, there might be something more left of Cass in the bear than we think, because it almost nuzzles each each of the members trying to identify them or smell them or or figure out what they are, or what's going on. We have to remember that mirroring it is an important motif in the final version of this movie. Um, earlier in the interrogation with Lomax, uh, Lomax asked Lena to describe the the features of the the shimmer, and uh, Lena says, "I saw a lot of duplications of forms, duplications," and she uses the word echoes as well. For instance, we see two deer prance into the scene, and they look very very similar to one another, and they're both extraordinary. Uh, they each have very, very tall antlers, okay? But those antlers are really branches. They're part animal, part plant. But we have two of them. There's a duplication of form. But mirroring also means that, well, the bear will forever mirror the fear. The fear that Cass Shepard felt in the last few minutes of her life before the bear killed her. She, that that part of her will always be mirrored and reflected 
by the bear. So in a sense, when the bear nuzzles, nuzzles the team members who are tied in their chairs, when the bear is nuzzling them, in part, that's Cash Shepherd still. It's the Cash Shepherd that still lives on in the bear. We have a duplication of form. When uh, when Anya Thornson, Gina Rodriguez's character, bursts back into the house with her rifle, and she's very angry, that antagonizes the bear. We see a mirroring of Anya's anger and the bear's anger. And then we had that terrible fight. You know, in the shooting script, that bear is responsible not just for the death of Anya, but also for the death of Josie Raddick. But in the final version of the movie, that's not true. Instead, we have a conversation. Lena talks with Josie Raddick, and Josie Raddick says to Lena, I know that Dr. Ventress wants to face the shimmer. And I know that you, Lena, you want to fight it. Okay. I don't want to do either of those things. For for Josie, she doesn't want her fear, her fear to be the part of her that lives on. She doesn't want that to be the point of departure for the transformation, which is the shimmer. Instead, we notice that for the first time in the story, Josie Raddick's arms are bare, and we can see little flowers, little green stems growing out of the scars on her arms. She disappears from view, and when Lena looks again, she's one of those foliate people, one of the flower people, but she doesn't know which one. Josie Raddick could be any one of them. She has become part of something larger. She is both becoming and embracing. We become the other that is in us. We become that. But we also connect. There's a sense of another person. And we connect with that. We embrace that. That becomes a kind of dynamic as of this point in the movie. And to some extent, the shimmer is also granting of wishes um because we see that you know when we first meet Josie her her head is down she she's not really talking to anyone she's trying to look at almost invisible she doesn't want to to um she she and then she mentions the fact that um Cassie later mentions the fact that perhaps the reason she cuts herself is because she wants to feel something and so in some extent the, the shimmer has granted her wish it's let her become something beyond herself. It's letting her feel something um, uh, and become part of the world around her. So then we have to ask, what do the other characters want? Well, we know that Ventress wants answers. It wants to know. It wants it wants a meaning to come out of what um, she, her, her the last two or two years that she has struggled to try to figure out what the shimmer is. She wants it to have meaning uh, before she dies. And what does Lena want? Lena wants to be punished. Lena is suffering from guilt. And again, each of these are self-destructive in a way. Um, again, uh, it's self-destructive with, with Josie and the fact that she is giving away, she's she's giving away any sense of ego or self and becoming part of the world. It's destructive with um with uh with Ventress because ultimately she finds out that there is no meaning, or if the, there is a meaning there, it is so unlike any meaning that we understand that um that her, her quest is impossible to do. And with Lena, hers is self-destructive in the fact that she actually gets to kill herself. Yes, yeah, she kills herself. <laughs> she kills the doppelganger. Okay, just as we have a new cane, we have a doppelganger uh, cane that appears at the beginning of the movie. Okay, uh, we have a doppelganger alien uh, version of Lena, and they grapple with one another, and we feel like, looks like, the, the new version, the light version, this lit up, shining version of, uh, of Lena will prevail. Okay, but no, no. Uh, Lena uses a phosphorus grenade and seems to destroy the doppelganger. And one of the things we realize is that... Um, Yes, uh, not only does, does she destroy the doppelganger, 
But as Lomax says, we returned to this place and we found everything ash. Um, she has destroyed the Nina shimmer. Nina has killed the shimmer. But there is a sense of almost, as Peter has said, almost a sense of self-destruction within the shimmer itself. The shimmer, once um, seeing that, uh, once confronted by Lena, grants her wish, and it it decides to destroy itself to some extent. It chooses to do that. Why? We don't. We're not quite sure. We don't understand the motifs of the shimmer. But what does this does? What does the destruction of the shimmer do? Well, one thing it does is it brings the new Cain, as we're calling him, back to life. He comes, he comes back from this 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 um, this coma-like um, stupor in which his organs are failing one by one, and suddenly he's whole again. Well, what does that mean? Well, to some extent, it's saying that, as Lena says, um, it wasn't. When Olmex asked her, what, what what did it want? I don't think it wanted anything. What was, what, what was it doing? It was destroying you. He goes, no, it wasn't destroying. It was creating something new. And that's what we're reminded of, this idea of two things coming together to create something new. Um, in the case of, of, of in what we're calling old Lena and new Cain, the very end of the movie, we find that they are the same. They are exactly the same. Not only has... has Lena become more like the Shimmer, but the Shimmer in the form of Cain has become more human. It has human emotions. It has human feelings. It is, it is, it has been forever changed by the world around it. And 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 that's the new weird again. That is this idea that we've had for so long with things like Lovecraft Country, where it's not the revolution that we're looking for. It's not the it's 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 not the oh it's us and them it's 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 ours and the other and sometimes the other overcomes us and sometimes we're able to overcome the other the new weird says no it's not about that it's about creating something new it's about making new things it's about it's about it's 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 rejecting this idea of the other it's about embracing the other and from that creating something new it is Atticus refusing to kill Caleb refusing to to follow in the old ways of, of, of killing your family in order to gain power. He rejects that. And we see that here. We see the embrace at the very end. We see the acceptance of things. And, and there's a lot going on here, what it's saying about trauma, what it's saying about who we are after something happens to us. We are not the same people that we were. And we think about the fact that Lena has to transform in order to save her marriage. And Cain cannot go back. Cain literally has to create a new Cain who is willing to embrace and forgive his wife for her infidelities. And so we see that the story is not only talking about what, what Peter likes to call the macro, the big idea. Oh, the shimmer's gonna take over the world and destroy the entire world. No, what, what this story is about is about each of us and how we change and how we embrace the otherness around us to become something new and to become something at peace and to become something weird. <laughs> there you go. We got one more video for you guys. This should be a lot more fun, but uh, that's coming up soon.